earlier there was there was a question in reference to I am the way the truth and the life that you answered and I found it to be a very logical answer but there was something that I found kind of missing in the puzzle when when he is referring to I am the way the truth and the life all of us being intelligent people I'm sure we're to see even being a literalist in the sense that that is what it is saying I am the way the truth the life now had it been that he was the prophet of the time and there was David and Solomon and etc 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 before him had it been a sense to where he was put on the same level of those other prophets and they all were the way the truth and the life according to that period of time I find it interesting that at no time in, the, in my biblical knowledge of the Bible does it ever state that King David or King Solomon or in any reference anybody else ever made the mention I am the way the truth and the life if they were indeed the way the truth and the life at that time why is it that they never made that same statement you see there are so many ways of saying the same thing so many ways you say the same thing you don't put it in that order like the very fact, the fact of salvation, you know, being saved. When I said in the time of Moses, now you have to now tell me that it wasn't so. In the time of Moses, I say Moses was the way to God. In the time of Abraham, Abraham was the way to God. He's telling people, he said, look, if you want to get to God, behave like this. This is what you do. God will love you and forgive you your sins. That is, in other words, he said, look, look at me, the way I'm doing, the way he prayed, Moses, the people must pray. The way he fasted, they must fast. The way he abstained from all Ill, evil, they do the same. If they cut a goat, he must, they must also cut a goat. Whatever the prophet of God of the time does, the people must follow. You don't just say, look, I am the way, the truth. The same statement he must make, or did Jesus make such a statement? That also you can't prove. But we accept it. That look, he could have said that. But did he say that in that form? Did he, what language did he speak? You have it in Greek. You have the whole thing written in Greek. Did he speak Greek? Which is not the case. Because a man, Jew, coming to the Jews will speak the Jewish language. It doesn't make sense that he's going to speak to them in Greek. When you preserve the word Allah, Allah, Lama Sabachthani. You see, to show you that he spoke his own mother tongue. But the rest of the Gospels, his preachings, not preserved in his language. So now we are not going into all the details, but the fact of the matter is you can see the spirit of what he's saying is, follow me. He said, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Did he want you to get crucified? No. The way I carry my responsibility, you carry yours. That is the way. He says, verily, verily I say unto you, most assuredly I'm telling you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There's no heaven for you, unless you're better than the Jew. And I'm asking, how can you be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments? He says, think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, or shall teach men so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall teach and do, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Ask my Christian brethren, ask them, do you keep the laws and the commandments? He says, no. I said, why don't you? He says, now we are living under grace. The law is nailed to the cross. I said, where did you get that? So he says, Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians. So what's this? What's this? Who's that? He says, Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who is your Lord and Master? He said, Jesus. I said, what did Jesus say? Nobody knows. Nobody ever calls Jesus. I said, look, this is what Jesus said. You are not of me if you don't take up your cross and follow me. The way I carry my responsibilities, you carry yours. It's a manly religion he's preaching, not a soft soaping, you know, cowardly religion. Somebody else pays for your sins. You get AIDS and Jesus takes the injections. Imagine, you get VD, gonorrhea, and Jesus takes the injections. Does it make sense? You have a headache and Jesus takes the pill. Does that make sense? No. I said, look, he's a manly religion, but now you have misunderstood the whole thing. You are not following Jesus. You're not listening to Jesus. If you listen to Jesus, you'll be a Muslim. 
You are following Paul, 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 Paul. He derailed Jesus' teaching. Derailed the whole thing. You don't have to do any good works today to be saved. You just believe in the blood, says Paul. Jesus says, you must be better than the Jew, otherwise there no heaven for you. I'm asking between the two of them, who must you listen? Jesus says the disciple is not greater than the master. The master is Jesus. A million disciples tell you to go and eat pigs. You can now eat pigs. Because Peter had a dream. The master says, thou shalt not eat the flesh of the swine. Because he confirms the law of Moses. To the letter. One jot or one tittle jot is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Not even that amount is to go out of the law, he says. And you have done away with the whole law. He says not even that much. And whosoever shall do such a thing is called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You worthless rubbish. Garbage. That's what he says. But you don't follow him. Therefore, you see, Michael H. Hart, he wrote a book. Michael H. Hart here in America, New York. Hart Publication Company. The hundred, or the top hundred, or the greatest hundred in history. He gives us a list of one hundred most influential men in history. From Adam alayhi salam, from Adam to current times. He gives you a list of these hundred great names and then he puts them in their order of seniority. Who is number one? Who is number ten? Who is number ninety-nine? And he puts Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa number one. The first person in that hundred list is Muhammad. Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior, number three. So he has to answer, account for it. He just can't just maybe some Arab bribe the fellow, you know, to say, look, put Muhammad number one and put your God number three. It's possible, but not probable. It wouldn't enter the Arab mind to do such a thing. You see, I wish they had done these things, but they haven't. They can't use that money that way. There are other ways of using it. Why does he put Jesus Christ number three? Because he says the honor for Christianity is to be shared between Paul and Jesus. In actual fact, Paul is the real founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. And you see in the writings of all the evangelists, what are they teaching? You see Paul, 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 nobody tells you what Jesus says. Jesus says you must not even look upon a woman to lust after her. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, had committed adultery with her already in his heart. But they all dance with other people's wives and daughters. They preach this in Sundays, and they put you into ecstasy. Sermons, what Jesus said, but as soon as they go out, they're dancing with other people's wives and da uh, daughters. With bare backs and bosoms almost coming out, with a few drinks to weaken the resistance. And they think nothing of it. Why? Because Jesus Christ didn't have the time to explain. So he said, somebody else is coming after me who will guide you into all truth. And that spirit of truth is Muhammad. That comforter is Muhammad. I look forward, next time when I come here, inshallah, I'd like to deliver a, talk, a lecture on that subject.